Hello friends, this is Sanjeev Kaushik and in this video, I want to talk about a key concept related to leveraged ETFs that often people misunderstand. In this video, we're going to cover the differences between the leveraged ETF and the normal ETFs. Also, how you cannot use leveraged ETFs in order to outperform the underlying asset. And lastly, what's the exact purpose of leveraged ETFs in a market for you? depending on whether you're a trader or if you're an investor. So without any further ado, let's get started. So firstly, what is a leveraged ETF? I'll take an example of TQQ, which is a leveraged ETF on NASDAQ 100 to explain how exactly the leveraged ETF works. So this is the website of TQQ uh, issuer company ProShares, and they say that TQQ is a leveraged ETF corresponds to 3x the daily performance of the NASDAQ 100 index. In other words, they try to give you the return that is equivalent to 3x of the return of the underlying asset, which in this case happens to be NASDAQ 100. Those of you who know that QQQ is another very popular ETF on NASDAQ 100, right? But that is 1x. That is that tries to mimic the return of NASDAQ 100 in a ratio of 1 is to 1. So you can also consider TQQ as a triple leveraged fund that tries to mimic the 3x the return of the QQQ ETF, right? Now, do we only have these ETFs that try to mimic 3x or 2x the returns of the uh, underlying asset or the underlying index? No, there are actually reverse ETFs as well. For example, SQQ or uh, uh, NVDL, for example, that is a leveraged ETF on uh, NVIDIA as a stock, PSLL, if I'm not mistaken, is the symbol for leveraged returns on Tesla stock and so on. So there are many such leveraged ETFs available in the markets. But people often misunderstand how to trade and invest on them. And this is exactly what I'm going to cover here. And we will carry on with the example of TQQ. Let me ask you one question first and foremost. If you're someone who wants to get higher returns than let's say NASDAQ 100, which we all know has been the best performing index in the year 2024 so far. If you want to beat the QQQ ETF or NASDAQ 100, in other words, would it suffice for you to just simply go ahead and buy TQQ ETF? Because after all, they're trying to give you three extra returns, isn't it? So theoretically, you may say that, yes, I do want to invest in TQQ and then I will get 3x the returns of NASDAQ 100, which by the way, would be a fantastic return. Of course, let's say you also understand the, the flip side, which is if QQQ would, let's say, give you minus 10% return in one year, then your return will be theoretically minus 30%. So let's say you do understand that aspect, that when it comes to uh, 3x the returns, it goes both ways. You can make 3x and you can also lose 3x. That's what the leveraged ETFs actually mean. However, it's not that easy. If it was that easy, trust me, any fund manager that claims to be able to beat NASDAQ 100 would do nothing but invest the investors' money in TQQ fund and keep their investors happy because he's generating 3x the return of NASDAQ 100. But this is not how the leveraged ETFs work. Notice the keyword here. The keyword is daily. And this is where the answer lies. Let me show you. If I compare the performance of TQQ with QQQ and how exactly does it look like? So the top panel has the daily chart of TQQ and the bottom panel has the daily chart of QQQ. And when you look at it, one cursory view and you can say that, yeah, by and large, they both go in the same direction. It's just that TQQ moves faster than QQQ. But that's not the whole picture. And in order to see the whole picture, I will have to switch to the weekly chart and then what you're going to notice is that TQQ made its high exactly when QQQ also made its high. Somewhere around the November of year 2021. And since then, QQQ has surpassed its all-time highs about 10 months ago. And 
T triple Q on the other hand is yet to reach its all time highs. So if you as a fund manager would have naively invested in just T triple Q tried to mimic 3x the returns of Nasdaq 100, you actually would have underperformed the underlying asset itself, which is the Nasdaq 100. So what's the reason for that? And that's why it's so important, by the way, to be able to figure out how an asset actually works and what is it that it is created for. You can't just blindly buy TQQ and say that I'm going to outperform the index. That's not how it works, right? Why is it that the TQQ is not able to outperform TQQ? Even though theoretically it states that this is exactly what their purpose is. They want to give you a 3x return. Before I give you the answer, let me just quickly talk about the sponsor of this video, which is the Tiger Brokers. They are a NASDAQ listed company and I've interacted with them in past few weeks. I found them to be really great in their services as well as their offerings. They offer access to multiple markets, especially US and Australian markets. They're also just sponsored for those of you who are investing in the Australian markets and are concerned about some brokers that may give you access to international markets, but also are not affiliated with chess sponsorship so in that case tiger is the chess affiliated broker and at the same time they also give you access to the us markets and the best part of course is they also let you trade in options i also found their pricing to be very competitive and the best part especially those of you who might be trading with sophisticated investors and paying a whole lot of data fee I found that Tiger Brokers does not have any data fee. So that's the best part. And they are also running um, some really great promotions currently. So if you are interested in opening your account with uh, Tiger, I would say this is the time. You will find the link in the description of this video or reach out to us. We'll send you a link separately. And of course, if you have any questions about the broker, feel free to reach out as well. Okay. All right. So now back to our original topic. You see, the reason TQQ has not outperformed QQQ in a long run is because TQQ also mimics the negative returns of QQQ. That is, if QQQ falls by 1% on a day, TQQ will have to fall by 3% by and large. And this is what distorts the returns on TQQ in a long run. So to give you an example, if let's say QQQ was trading at 100 and it goes up by 2%, QQQ at that time will be trading at 102. And because TQQ is going to mimic 3x the return, then TQQ will be trading at 106, assuming that both started with the same level of 100. Okay, so far so good. Theoretically, this is exactly how the TQQ ETF should be performing. Let's say the next day, some bad news occurs and QQQ falls by 10%. 10% fall in QQQ will mean that it will fall roughly to the levels closer to 90. However, TQQ will close roughly to the levels of 70. Why? Because its returns will be minus 10 into 3x, that is minus 30% in that particular day. Next day, day number three, it turns out that the markets were just overreacting to that bad news and the QQQ ETF ends up recouping all its gains from there. And it again goes up by 10%. So from 90 level, it now goes to roughly 99 levels, right? So that's the approximation here that I'm using. And same way, TQQ will also give you 30% return. So from 70 levels, TQQ will not go to 99 level. It will only go to 91 level. So you see the difference right there? TQQ is still 9% below where it started. However, QQQ is only 1% below where it started. I know that I've used some very extreme numbers here. However, this example is still true. And that's why if you have to judge the performance of one asset versus another, 
you should always look at the performance in a longer run. Why? Because in a longer run, a 10% move in a week is not a big move, right? Although here, my example took 10% move in a single day. But in reality, these kind of big moves are going to distort the returns of any leveraged ETF. And this is going to be true for all the ETFs that are leveraged. Essentially, the key is that they try to mimic the daily performance. They're not saying that they would always give you the returns that are 3x of NASDAQ 100 ETF. That's not what they're claiming here. They're claiming that they will give you 3x the return on a daily basis. And because there are red days as well, that's why the performance gets distorted, right? Only because there are red days. If there were only green days in NASDAQ 100, which is impossible, of course, considering the nature of the markets, then only this performance in a long run would always remain 3x. Okay, but that's not gonna happen. So how should you trade the TQQ? I believe the only way to trade TQQ is if you want to use additional leverage and if you're trading intraday. You can also use TQQ if you want to trade in an asset that is a little more volatile than QQQ, but is of lower in value. So this is only 66. However, QQQ as we speak is currently trading around 473. So that's roughly six, seven times bigger than TQQ, right? So if you have smaller capital and if you trade intraday, the best way to trade a uh, NASDAQ 100 ETF is TQQ. The options on leveraged ETFs also tend to be really, really liquid. So in that case, you can also consider trading options on TQQ if your view is not that long in terms of the time frame. Now, how do I like to trade personally on TQQ? I believe one of the best trades that you can put on on TQQ is the covered call on TQQ. You buy TQQ, one lot as we speak today is only going to be costing you $6,600 and you can sell slightly out of the money calls against TQQ and you can keep on doing it and generate healthy returns if you know how to trade covered calls. If you don't know how to trade covered calls, I'll highly recommend that you go ahead and watch my video, which is a complete guide on trading covered calls. I can assure you that you're going to learn something new from that video and you will have a completely different viewpoint towards this strategy after watching that video. So this is all that I wanted to cover in this video about trading on leveraged ETFs versus normal ETFs. I hope you found the content of this video useful. Do let me know in comments what your thoughts and feedback are.